You have an extensive background, specifically in PR and comms at some pretty big time gaming companies, right? Like EA, Electronic Arts, and is it Ubisoft? So I worked for EA Sports, Ubisoft, and then the third one is called THQ, which is actually a company that went bankrupt. And then they more recently had a revival, but it's actually run out of a European company now. So out of your experience working with like EA Sports and, and Ubisoft, can you speak on the kind of overlap on what you've learned there and certainly what you maybe brought into your world now working with the NFT investment side of things. Is there specific things you draw on from your time at EA and Ubisoft? Yeah, absolutely. When I was hired at Ubisoft, I was actually hired as a consumer media manager. So I worked across all Ubisoft titles, but I only worked with consumer press. And this was at a time where not everyone was covering games, like games were for nerds. And I went there right before the launch of the first Xbox. And I feel like that was kind of a big moment in gaming because it took what was a PC and made it more accessible. Again, like push button technology, because before you had to have these super big PCs and you're on a keyboard and the games are super complex. So only so many people would play them. But with Xbox and specifically Halo, it completely changed the dynamic of gaming. A big part of my job was really going to these media outlets like USA Today and Time Magazine and getting them just to cover video games because they didn't cover video games because they didn't see it as entertainment. They saw it as technology. So again, I feel like I was kind of lucky in that I came at a time where it was kind of an easy sell. We saw specifically... You know, they were known for as a small French company, family owned. So they had like a lot of these kitty games. But right before I went, they had this game called Splinter Cell. And it was this beautiful, like stealth action oh, video game. Oh, I know Splinter game Cell. Yes, great game. Where, yeah. And it was this new genre game. And it was kind of like, you know, we talk about use cases. I didn't have to do anything. I just give them the controller and, I, and they say, hey, play this. And they're like, wow, <laughs> you know, and they're just blown away because you touch it for the first time and it's very accessible and it's engaging and it's fun. What I really learned in the gaming kind of the flip side of that, the gaming media is very formulaic and it was very straightforward. You would announce a game. You would do a preview, you would do a first hands-on, you do a review. And to this day, that's still all they do. There's really not a lot of creativity in that. So me having to work across all these games and all these different outlets, I really learned the art of storytelling. I really learned that you know, I would have to go in and take certain aspects of a game and sell it to a certain media outlet differently than I would sell it to another outlet. I think. Kind of the best example of this, I worked on this game called Brothers in Arms, which was a game that was based on real events that happened during World War II. And at this time, Call of Duty was already out there as one of the biggest games in the world. I don't know if people would remember or were even alive, but when Call of Duty first came out, it was also a World War II game. So the challenge there was, you know, how do you launch a new IP against the biggest game in the world. And one thing that we were able to do is really focus on the history of the game. I actually worked with a production team and we went to the History Channel and pitched them this story idea of, you know, what if we got all these World War II vets and had them tell our, their stories and then use the game engine and actually show people exactly what happened during some of these kind of famous battles. So it was a long process where, and we actually went out to Normandy and we brought a bunch of press with us and we walked them through the beaches of Normandy and really gave them this unique experience that you can only gain by looking at this game. And then after a year long process, the History Channel actually green lighted it and, and it, they did run it, which was very cool. So I think that that was very beneficial for me because even when I look at a B2B product, like everything has a story. And it's really figuring out, well, what is your story? What makes you unique? And then also figuring out, well, what is the best media outlet or who is the best reporter to tell this story to the audience that we are trying to reach? On that note of just storytelling, I mean, what's your approach? I see how that's so valuable, of course, in the world that you're in now. I mean, 
early inning, like you said, still figuring out first pitch. There's a velocity of content out there around this space that you're in. And so the messaging and the narrative that you're telling is so important. But what's your approach to storytelling in this space that you're in now, this new space that there are a lot of eyeballs and ears on? There's a lot of distortion too, a lot of, a lot of noise, a lot of pressure. What's kind of been your approach to storytelling in this NFT world? Working for an investment firm is different. This is the first time I've worked for an investment firm. So I think one of the biggest challenges for me especially is we don't have a product. This is the first time where I'm not actually pushing a product. So we're really kind of looking to push the entire space forward. The founder is a guy named Andrew Steinwald, who he's been around the space, what they call in the space an OG forever, which is like three years, right? <laughs> in this space, because <laughs> exactly. it hasn't been around a lot, but exactly. he's like this old time veteran. He just turned 30. And we really lean on him because he, from a long time ago, kind of said, this is the next big thing. This is going to be the next trillion dollar market. And he actually started a podcast and a blog called Zima Red, where he would talk to a lot of the different founders and creators who are building the space. And then on this blog, and also even more so on his podcast, he has these very candid conversations of just about like, what are you doing? What excites you? You know, what are you learning? What mistakes did you make? Kind of similar what you're doing with marketing trends. And so he has this whole catalog of creators who ended up being some of the top guys who are building in the space now. And he's still active in this space. And, you know, a big part of my job is working with him is with the content creation and kind of adding some of the different podcasts. Me just listening to the podcast, that's kind of how I learned about NFTs. When I first started, I really had no idea what they were talking about. So I'm always learning. And now I, you know, I have a pretty good grasp on things. But I would say that that's the other kind of big challenge within the NFT space is that it's changing so fast. Like every day it changes. So you have to be on Twitter, you have to be on Discord, you have to be engaging with these communities and everyone's learning. And I think kind of our approach with marketing and it's Andrew takes the lead on this is he's really a voice for the space, highlighting everything that's going right and really focusing on the people and the companies who are making a difference and kind of pushing that out there. And from that, that has enabled him to bring in these great investors because people trust him and a lot of things he has predicted are coming true. So a lot of this, as far as our strategy goes, it's really just focusing on the wins and if something works, celebrating that and pushing it out there. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this channel for more great marketing interviews with today's top industry leaders. And thank you to our partners at Salesforce. Salesforce brings marketing and engagement together. Head over to salesforce.com forward slash marketing.